All right, praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our webinar, Good Friday Service. And we're so glad that you can join us. Sorry for my lateness. We have some technical difficulties, but nevertheless, we are here. Our speaker is here. He is ready and prepared. We want to greet uh, the Honorable Elder David Hollis. He is a member of the Logan Park Assembly Church of Christ in Gary, Indiana, under the leadership of the Honorable Bishop Stearns. So we thank God that our Elder Hollis is with us today. Thank you, Elder Hollis, for accepting this invitation. Uh, for those of you that don't know, he has been a son of this house for many years. And we're grateful to God that he was able to join us today. So without further ado, uh, we're going to say a word of prayer, and then we're going to yield the mic to Elder David Hollis. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for this Good Friday. We thank you for the coming together of your people. Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that even though we're being bothered by this COVID-19 virus, God, we know that your blood is the answer. And Father, we thank you for the application of the blood. Now, Father, we pray for every listener on this, on this webinar. God, we pray their hearts will be lifted, they'll be encouraged. And Father, we thank you. We pray for the man of God, anoint him afresh. Father, we believe he has a word for this hour. And Father, we thank you for him. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The Lord be with you. God bless you. We yield the mic now to Elder David Hollis. God bless you, Elder Hollis. He not only gives peace, but he is our peace. And we're grateful today that those of you sitting in your homes, in your living rooms, in your basements, and wherever you are, we're thankful that though we appear to be bound, we appear to be homebound, the word of God is never bound. It is an eternal word. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It divides asunder soul and spirit. It discerns joint marrow of the bone. And I'm thankful to the Lord for uh, Bishop Farmer and the Christ Pentecostal Church family. Thank you for the opportunity to share this Good Friday all together. I'd like to take your attention now to the word of the Lord. And as we go to the word of the Lord, I pray that the word would give you comfort. Those of you that are mourning the loss of loved ones or friends, I pray that the word of God would give you enlightenment. Those who are seeking answers and want wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I also pray that this word would give you hope. Hope beyond today. Hope that says that tomorrow will come and tomorrow will have a better outcome. Let's go to the scriptures. It's in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter number 55. If you have it, if you would go with me, I'd greatly appreciate that. Let's go to the scriptures and see what the word of the Lord has to say. I find that when I need direction, when I need instruction, when I need correction or reproof, when I need edification, I find it in the word of God. Isaiah 53, let's go to verse number five. The word of the Lord reads, Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God. And for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, 
but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing I sent it to. Father, we thank you today for the blessed word of God. I pray that as we open the scriptures, we pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Lord, when we close this book, let us be able to testify. It was good for us to commune together. In Jesus' name, amen. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing I send it to. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sin. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. For a few moments out of the word of the Lord, I'd like to minister to you from this subject, an accomplished word. An accomplished word. The word of the Lord is ministered this afternoon on what is referred to by many as Good Friday. It is uh, the day that we take the time to commemorate um, the agony. Uh, we used to sing a song, King of my life, I crown thee now, thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thine thorn crown brow. Lead me to Calvary, lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me. Lead me to Calvary. Here in the book of Isaiah, we see uh, a book that is written uh, by a gentleman whose name, Isaiah, uh, God has saved. Jehovah has saved. It is a book uh, that gives detail, not only of Isaiah's present circumstances, but also of hope concerning uh, the Christ to come, the Messiah. We even get to hear about um, definitions of new heaven and new earth. It is this gentleman, Isaiah, Isaiah, an individual who uh, is known as a prophet of God. He is known as one that takes the time to hear what the Lord is saying. He hears from God, he writes, and then he speaks. When the Lord comes to him, he writes uh, the prophecy against Israel, and he starts declaring that he's a man of unclean lips. He prophesies and he begins to talk about a sinful nation and a people. He testifies and says, the ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's crib, but Israel does not know, the people do not consider. And it is at a time that Isaiah prophesies this, he begins to speak. He is like many other prophets that when they spoke the word of the Lord, uh, some people heard, some people turned, many didn't believe. But the great thing that we have is writings. We're able to go back, and according to the scripture, the, the things that were written of old, they were written for our learning, that through patience and comfort of the scripture, we would have hope. We get an opportunity to see that those things that were written by holy men of God, 
They wrote, they spake as they were unctioned or moved by the Holy Ghost. And when you start reading the scripture, some people will tell you, oh, uh, the, old, the Old Testament is just a bunch of old stories. Uh, some people even just say they're just allegories. Uh, they're not necessarily uh, literal events, but uh, they're just stories that have a good positive meaning and they should help you through life. But what we see through the prophecies, through the prophecies of the prophets, both major and minor, that when God spoke concerning things to come, those things have come accurately. Those things have come with detail. It was not uh, just arbitrarily scattered events, but they were events that were predicted thousands, sometimes hundreds of years before they happened. And with accuracy and detail, they came to pass. This gives the church in the 21st century some great hope. Because if it be true, and it is, that God watches over his word to perform it. If it be true, and it is, ah, that not one jot or tittle of his word shall fail. It is true then it gives us hope and great consolation that just like it was prophesied concerning Babylon, it was prophesied concerning uh, the Medes and the Persians. It was prophesied concerning uh, the Grecian Empire. It was prophesied concerning the Roman Empire. It was prophesied and it has been fulfilled. Whether it was Alexander the Great, uh, we've seen each leader, each one of them prophesied so with so much accuracy prior to their even existence that when you study the scriptures and then you could compare the scriptures with history, you see that the word of the Lord is true. And so now, going into the book of Isaiah, Isaiah gets visions, Isaiah gets revelations. He serves under several different monarchs. Uh, it is uh, Isaiah, it is Hezekiah, it is, it is even Cyrus. Uh, he sees in the vision the Lord high and lifted up. He sees in the vision uh, the train filling the temple. But it is here, I want to move uh, to where the Lord even begins to include Gentile nations. Though the prophecy is against Israel in the beginning, and though it is concerning them and uh, their unwillingness to turn, their unwillingness to change, he brings them to a point that he makes it known that there is somebody who will receive me. The Lord, his desire, uh, he doesn't get delight. He doesn't get pleasure uh, in people dying. The Lord doesn't get pleasure in the death of the wicked. Uh, it's his will uh, that all should be saved. He doesn't want any to perish. He spoke in one place and says to Israel, I stretched out my hands to you. I kept calling out to you, but you wouldn't come. As a hen, uh, Jesus the Christ spoke and says, as a hen would gather her brood, so I called you to gather you under my wings, but you would not. Here we see the opportunity of a chosen people, an elect people, an ecclesia, a called out people. Those who were called out, called out with Abraham, called out with Sarah, called out even from the bondage of Egypt. They come out, and when you read the scripture, what a mighty hand God brings them out. The Bible says, uh, with an outstretched arm, hallelujah to the light, he brings them out, hallelujah. That gives me a level of confidence. That even what we're going through in the year 2020, the Lord still has an outstretched hand with a mighty arm. He will deliver with a mighty arm. He will save. Yes, we are in our homes. Yes, it appears that we are bound. But this same word 
This word that we read and carry under our arms or carry on our phones uh, to church or to the, to the house of God, to the building, now he has taught us hide that word in our hearts. He writes and Isaiah starts saying, Isaiah says that there is a nation, there is a people, there are people who are not called a people. There is an elect that is not amongst the called out ones. Oh, but there's a chosen, hallelujah, that is among those who appear to be no people. And God says, I will call them in. When some of the prophecies are prophesied, the church is not seen. Some of the prophets didn't see the age of grace. Some of them didn't see this dispensation in which we live. Oh, but Isaiah begins to prophesy and he gives Gentiles hope that there are people who are not a people that the Lord was going to call and they would hear. I'm glad that Christ, when he died, the Bible teaches us that uh, he died, that them that would believe. Hallelujah. I'm glad that it wasn't just simply for a select group of people, but it was for whosoever will. Here today, we are celebrating that we believe that Jesus did not just die for one ethnicity. Jesus the Christ didn't hang on the cross and just die for one small group of people. But the Bible teaches us uh, that he died for many. Hallelujah. According to the scripture, uh, John writes and says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. That word, that word, that eternal word, that word that was spoken or that word which was sent. That word which was sent, hallelujah. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He sent his son into this world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Isaiah gets a chance to see it. Isaiah writes, Isaiah had written in chapter number 53 and talked about him, that he was wounded for our transgressions that he was bruised for our iniquity, that the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I am thankful to God. Isaiah prophesies and tells us how he's coming as a root out of a dry ground. Hallelujah. We get a chance to know what lineage he's coming through out of the house of David. And just like Isaiah saw it, it came to pass. Church, be confident of this very thing, that the Lord is not a liar. God is not a liar. God keeps his word. Isaiah writes and begins to say, he says, behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God. And for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. This is a time, especially during COVID-19. We have been uh, uh, given guidelines and given uh, recommendations and given instructions. One of the first we heard was wash your hands. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Uh, then we were taught, uh, be careful where you put your hands. Be careful where you place your hands. Uh, uh, Isaiah had been teaching that for a long time through the Lord. That uh, Isaiah taught us that we ought to lift up holy hands. Oh, we said uh, in the congregation of the righteous many times that, Lord, we want clean hands. But I pray that you would do more out of this COVID-19 than just get some clean hands. I pray that you get clean hands, but get a clean heart. I pray that you would seek the Lord while he may be found. Find a place that you can lift up holy hands without wrath and without doubt. 
Ask the Lord, create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Seek the Lord, call upon him while he is near. Uh, I know you can't go out. I know you can't get to the house of the Lord. I know you can't get to the temple. I know uh, that there's no light in the sanctuary, but the Lord is nigh thee even in your mouth. It is the word of faith. It's the word that we preach. I dare you to receive the engrafted word of God into your heart. It does something for you even in confining moments. Church of the living God, Isaiah writes to the church and he says, let the wicked forsake his way. He says, why? Because the Lord hath mercy. He have mercy upon whom he will have mercy and God will abundantly pardon. Maybe you're sitting out there and you say, hey, oh, I ain't got time to get to church. I wish I could have went to church three weeks ago. Oh, Lord, if you just give me one more chance to go to church. Eh, I believe that day is coming. But I must tell you, don't you wait until you get to the sanctuary uh, to clean your hands and to get your heart right. Hallelujah. While you're sitting in your living room, while you're in your bedroom, while you're driving in your car going to the grocery store, I dare you to start talking to the God of heaven. I dare you to do a thing called repent. That word repent means to turn. It doesn't just mean to cry. It means to turn. Change your direction. Change your ways. Forsake your ways. You're not ignorant. You know what God requires of you. You know what God wants from you. I say to all of you who were raised in church, all of you who know the word of the Lord, ah, that word has not departed from you. That word is still in you. You know that word. Take heed to the word of God. Isaiah then begins to write and he says, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. The same way in the season that we're in called spring, we look forward to the rain. We look forward to the rain. They, they uh, used to teach us in elementary school that uh, April showers brings May's flowers. Uh, you don't become frustrated about rainy days in April because you're looking forward to the blooming of your garden in May. The Lord tells Isaiah, and Isaiah speaks it and says, as the rain cometh down, and as the snow falleth from heaven and watereth the earth, there is purpose in the snow. Uh, uh, th th there's treasure. I believe the scripture says there is treasure in the snow. There's a secret treasure in the snow. Why? Because it's doing something beyond what you can see. That water, it soaks beyond the soil that you see up top. It's doing something to seeds and buds in the ground. It appeared to be uh, that the garden was dead. Uh, looks like the tulip bulbs were gone. It looks like the calla, the lilies, uh, the tiger lilies had died and faded. Oh, but the rain, the rain has purpose. The purpose of the rain is that it saturates what's been planted. Church. Oh, God, the word of God has been planted in your heart. I pray that right now, while I'm declaring the word, that your heart has got some good ground. I pray that your heart is not stony. I pray your heart is not uh, bitter or anger. I talk to all the church hurt people. I pray that the Lord would heal your heart so that the word can penetrate your heart, that the word can find a good place in your heart, because just like the rain and the snow uh, saturates the earth that it might bring forth, it gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Church, the word of God, so shall the word of God be that goeth out of the Lord's mouth. The Lord sent his word 
His word showed up, named the Christ, Jesus the Christ. Ah, the word was made flesh. Hallelujah. Shema, and it dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He understood the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me too. Jesus came and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me too. Ah, I was anointed to do some things, to mend the brokenhearted, ah, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Ah, I was anointed to give sight to the blind. Jesus comes and testifies. He says, I was anointed to do. Here Isaiah writes, and Isaiah says, uh, uh, the, the, the word of the Lord goes out of the mouth of God and it will not return empty. It will not return uh, without authority. It will not turn uh, vain, will not return vain or, or empty without power. He says, uh, but the word of the Lord, it, it will not return vain, but it shall accomplish that which I please. Church, that word that God spoke, that word that was sent, that word that was made flesh and dwelt among us. Uh, Isaiah says it will accomplish the pleasure of God. Hallelujah. What was the pleasure of God? And it please the Lord to bruise him, a man who knew no sin. Now, uh, sounds uh, like some would say, uh, sounds kind of sadistic. Uh, why would God get pleasure out of bruising? Why would God get pleasure out of afflicting uh, what he said? It was according to the scriptures uh, that it will prosper. The word of the Lord will prosper. It will accomplish the, what he sent it to do. Church, when Jesus came. Now, this week, this week is some referred to by many as Holy Week. But imagine uh, the pendulum swing. Uh, at the beginning of this week, uh, he's referred to as Hosanna. Ah, uh, he's crying, they cry, Hosanna. Ah, uh, he's referred to as king. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. In the beginning of this week, he is lauded and applauded. But then by the middle of the week, he is betrayed by one of those that he chose. I wonder, how are you making it from week to week? Where are your emotions swinging from week to week? Some of us now here in Indiana, we're in our third week going almost into our fourth week of shelter in place. We've been in our houses for almost four weeks. It's three weeks now. Where has your emotions uh, gone from one day to the next? And every day, I know some of us have to process news differently. I myself, I had to turn the news off for a minute ah, because it seems like they were only feeding some negative things. They were only declaring uh, negative things. And I needed to go find the word of God. I needed uh, to have my head lifted up because he's the lifter of my head. He's the light on my countenance. Hallelujah. But Isaiah writes and Isaiah says uh, that it pleased God. His word will accomplish what the pleasure of God was. Christ understood what the pleasure of God was. He knew that he had to suffer and he had to die. Why? Because his death was not the end. It was not that he was afraid of dying. Uh, he had already said, no man takes my life. He said, I lay it down and I pick it up again. He already testified to Mary, Martha, I am the resurrection and I am the life. So what was the agony in the Garden of Gethsemane? That he had to please the Father. 
He who knew no sin became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. Church in Christ. Hallelujah. I say to each one of you today, as we celebrate uh, this season that we call resurrection, some call it Easter, we celebrate this season, but understand that it was not uh, what some call the thrill of victory. It was the thrill of agony. It was the thrill of agony because he understood that he had to please his father. According to the scripture, he endured the cross, despising the shame. Why? For the joy that was set before him. I say to each one of you today, hallelujah. Oh, but there is an accomplished word. God's word will be accomplished. Some of you are getting nervous by what you see going on in our economy. You're nervous about what you see going on in our families. You're nervous about, you're nervous about every time you turn on the television, there's always another report. But I'm asking you according to Isaiah, whose report will you believe? Hallelujah. Church, the report of the Lord, the word of the Lord standeth sure. The Lord knows them that are his. Hallelujah. I encourage you today that God's word was accomplished. He sent his word and that word, hallelujah, made flesh. That flesh took a beating. Why? Oh, because he purchased our sin. That, that word, that flesh had to be ripped because according to the book of Hebrews, that flesh was the veil. The veil in the temple and the tabernacle in the wilderness was a type of the veil of Christ. Christ was the real veil. Ah, he said, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me, Lord, have mercy. But not only is he the veil, but the veil had to be ripped. The veil gets ripped, but he's not only the veil, he is the Lamb of God. But he is not only the Lamb of God, he's the high priest. So he's the veil, he's the Lamb, he's the high priest. The veil can only be ripped from the top. It has to be God who tears the veil. The Bible says it this way, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. Church, but Christ was also the lamb. The lamb had to die because according to the scripture, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. But the blood of the lamb has to be offered up, but it can only be offered up by the high priest. But Christ is the great high priest. Christ is the lamb. Christ is the veil. Church, oh, be confident. The Bible says that he offered up himself. He is high priest. He is lamb. He offers up his blood. He is the veil. He is the word. That's why we sing, it's all in him. The fullness of the Godhead. It's all in him. By him all things were made, and without him was not anything made that was made. Uh, church, uh, he is the life, and he's the light of me, and I encourage you today. Uh, don't feel that the word of God is not powerful. Don't feel uh, that the word of God uh, is not beneficial. I promise you it is an accomplished word. Uh, church, uh, when Jesus could say it is finished. Church, it was because the word had been accomplished. He shed his blood. According to the scripture, the life of the flesh is the blood. So when he shed his blood, he was shedding his life. He didn't just do it for me and my family here. He did it for you. He did it for your family right there. 
I today speak as a servant of the Lord and say to you, God's word is true. His word is quick. That word quick doesn't mean fast. It means alive. His word is quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of faith that I just preached to you, today it will accomplish what it was sent to do. And it will prosper in the thing that he sent it to. Today, we're celebrating that Jesus the Christ accomplished the purpose that he was sent to. He fulfilled the will of his father. We celebrate. We give honor and respect because we understood that he got past the agony. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. But he could stand up and testify. I am the son of God. He could declare the will of my father must be accomplished. He could not ascend. He prayed a prayer and said, Father, glorify thou me with the glory I had with you before the world was. Isaiah says the word went out and it couldn't return unaccomplished. It couldn't return void or empty. Church, right now, we have a great high priest, hallelujah, who has ascended and he has accomplished the will of God. I say to each one of you today, be encouraged. Be encouraged. Ah, I tell you, like the prophet said, weep not for the joy of the Lord. It is your strength. I encourage each one of you, don't just have clean hands. Get a clean heart. Get a clean heart. Today, as many of you will take part in taking that which represents the body and the blood of Christ, that which when it's prayed over is consecrated for many other common use, I implore you, Examine yourself. Examine yourself. Search yourself. You know if you've got clean hands or not. Anybody that's not saved, you can get saved. You can be born again of water and spirit. Today, some people say, well, I don't know if I could get to the building. We've gone back to the days where we used to have prayer meeting in your own home. I pray that there's somebody in your house that knows how to seek God. I pray that you would seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. His word went out and it accomplished what it was sent out to do. Today we celebrate. And I know it sounds oxymoronic, because this is the day of agony. But I say to each one of you, be confident of this very thing, that he who had begun a good work in you, he will perform it. His word is in you. His word went out on you. And it's going to prosper in you if you walk by faith. When we got saved, we had to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It required faith. In our walk with God, we have to walk by faith. And one day, if we all, if the Lord tarries, we're all going to die. But you have to die in faith. Death is not the final spot. There is a resurrection. We're hopeful today because of Christ. Because just like he died, he was buried. And he rose. We too have that confidence that if that same spirit that raised him from the dead dwell in us, hallelujah, it's going to get us up to. My prayer to God for you 
is that you would live by the accomplished word of God. God bless you in Jesus' name. Pastor Farmer, God bless you and thank you so much. God bless you and thank you, Elder Hollis. We have enjoyed the word of God on this morning or afternoon. And certainly we could feel the anointing of God. Uh, for those that have been listening um, over the airways and, and however you're viewing us, there's over 189 people on the line. Our prayer line is opening right now. It's open right now. I have ministers online. They are ready to pray with you. Uh, during this time and season, we had a young lady that called in and God filled her with the Holy Ghost on the phone. So I want you to know that Jesus is omnipresent. He can do whatever he wants to do in any crisis. So those of you that need prayer, we're going to pray uh, right now. Amen. The word of God will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish that that has been said. And we thank God, amen, for the word of God. At this time, let us bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the word of God that has come forth. Father, we thank you that we know that you are our Father, you are our God, the one that we can trust in, even in this time. Father, we pray, God, that those that were listening, God, that they not just have clean hands, but God, give us a clean heart. Wash us thoroughly in the blood of Jesus. Now, Father, we pray, God, that you have your way. God, that you save somebody, deliver somebody, call the backslider back home, Lord. Do what needs to be done in this season. And Father, those that are struggling with this COVID-19, God, I pray healing over their bodies, God, in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Amen and amen. Our prayer line is open. We're going to get ready to receive the Lord's Supper. Amen. And I'm going to be reading to you out of God's Word. Amen. Those of you that have your Lord's Supper, amen, you will need to prepare uh, the supper before you. And as we do it all, when I give you the time, you will then get your oil. You will anoint yourself or whoever's in your home. You will anoint each other. And then we will partake of the Lord's body and blood. I want to read to you out of God's word. It is what we read every communion uh, uh, Sunday that when we have communion. And I want to read to you out of 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, I'm sorry, the 11th chapter, verse 23. 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, starting at verse 23. Paul's words to the Corinthians, uh, he wants them to remember the Lord Jesus. And he gives them instructions on how they should receive the Lord's Supper. Beginning, starting at the 23rd verse, the word of the Lord reads this thus, For I have received of the Lord, which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This is the New Testament in my blood, this do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But here we go, verse 28. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. But let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Why? Not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. 
Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. Wait one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home. And he come together unto come, not unto condemnation, but the rest will I send in order when I come. The word of the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, God, that you would bless this communion that is before us. Some, Lord, were not able to get uh, the, 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 the fruit of the vine and the wafer. But God, at home, God, whatever they're using, we pray that you sanctify that. We understand that this is symbolic of your body and your blood. So, Father, I pray now that you will consecrate this holy communion. Father, as we partake one with the other, the words that tarry one for another. And Father, as we're waiting for one another, and God, we're positioned ourselves that we may eat of your body and blood. So, Father, we pray right now that you consecrate every cup, every wafer, every juice, Lord, every cup of juice, Lord. I pray that you consecrate. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Now, Father, we ask that if there's any sins that we have committed, we ask that you will forgive us. Wash us thoroughly, God, from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Those things known, those things we don't know, forgive us, Father. But we do not want to eat and drink damnation unto ourselves. So, Father, I pray, now in the name of Jesus, that forgiveness will be granted. And, Father, by faith, we believe that it is done in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask that you anoint, amen, yourselves at this time and those in your home. Amen. I trust that everyone is anointing. Amen. If there's no one there but you, anoint yourself with oil. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I want you to take the cup in your hand. And everyone together, I want to give you an opportunity for everybody to get the cup in your hand. Amen. Amen. We're doing this together as a unified body. Amen. Taking the wafer. Amen. Into your hand. The body. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was broken for you. Take it and eat it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, drink ye all of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we just begin to worship the Lord right here? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Father, we bless you right now. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. On this good Friday, God, we, we lift you up. We give you glory. We thank you for your blood that was shed, God, that would cover us and keep us, Lord, until the day that you call us home. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Thank you for the life-changing blood. Hallelujah. Father, we love you today. We give your name glory and praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. While you're at home, uh, let's do a little bit of this. All the blood of Jesus. All the blood of Jesus. All the blood of Jesus. 
She's going to come and meet you all just for a moment. Amen. You haven't seen her. She's been in school online. Amen. So uh, I want to take this opportunity uh, to just allow her to greet you all uh, on this Good Friday. Praise the Lord, saints. I miss you. I love you. I thank God for um, this opportunity to greet you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Keep the word of um, the cross um, hidden in your hearts. We thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Be blessed and God bless you. Amen. At this time, we're going to have the benediction. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee. The Lord be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. Lord, give me peace. Go in the peace of the Lord. And as we always say, shalom, shalom. God bless you. Love you tonight. Yes, what an amazing message. And we hope that you were blessed. We invite you to join us in giving as it enables us to continue ensuring the gospel reaches those in need. Giving is available by downloading the Givelify app, available in both the Apple and Android app stores. We thank you for choosing our church to partner with during these uncertain times. Be sure to stay connected with us throughout the week online at ChristPentecostalTemple.org and on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at CPTINC. We believe God has something unique to say to you, and our hope is that you feel his love stronger today than ever before. Thanks again for being with us. Have a great weekend.